Yo, what is going on guys? GBA fans, subscribers, everybody on this channel, everybody watching this video, what is up guys? We are here for week one of the Global Battle Association, the GBA. This week we are taking on Envy and his San Diego Chim Chargers. Now, this battle is post-commentated. Uh, I'm going to be my, doing my team builder portion as well at the beginning of this video, so if you guys want to skip that, make sure to click on the timestamp that I'm going to leave in the comments down below uh, if you want to go straight to the battle. This is an exceptional week because uh, I didn't have my computer. Uh, it wasn't ready when I actually played, so uh, I couldn't uh, live record the battle. I'll be re live recording week two, which means there's going to be a separate team builder video but when I do post comms uh, I like to have the team builder attached in one video so that you guys don't have to watch two very very short videos uh, whereas when I do the live comm I like to have the team builder on the side and then you guys get the full experience of the live battle so hopping right into it we're gonna go look over MV's team so you guys see it on the right side he's got Tapu Koko, Hoopon, Bound, Empoleon, Gligar, Kirim, that's a regular Kirim. We have Hippowdon, Stoutlin, Incineroar, Girder, Slowbro, and Mega Pinsir. If you guys don't know our team, we're gonna I'm gonna go over it just for this week. So we have Scolipede, uh, we have Sylveon, Darmanitan, Decidueye, Milotic, Zoroark, Zapdos, Drudagon, Steelix, Barbarical, and Megalopony. So as you guys can see on screen, the first Pokemon that I decided to bring was Megalopony. Uh, now, the only reason that this Pokemon is coming... Actually, this is the last Pokemon on the team, so let me go over... <laughs> let me go back over to the first Pokemon. We're going to get to Lopony at the end. So, the first Mon that I decided to bring was Zapdos. Now, there are a plethora of Zapdos sets that I considered, but Choice Scarf, I felt, was the strongest against Envy's team, just because I know that Envy is more than likely going to run Stone Edge on his Mega Pinsir, and even with a Charty Berry, there's no way that I can guarantee rocks off the field because I'm not bringing Decidueye, so I don't want to risk him going for plus two, and then uh, even with a Charty Berry knocking me out through it with uh, Mega Pinsir's Stone Edge if he's at plus two. So I decided to bring uh, Zapdos with a Choice Scarf uh, this week. So we have Volt Switch and U-Turn because I don't want to get screwed by his ground types uh, being the Gligar and the Hippowdon. I have Hidden Power Ice specifically for the Gligar. I need V'd in a way where I can uh, two-shot the Gligar always, no matter what spread he is with an Eviolite uh, with a Hidden Power Ice. And I have Defog on there because the rest of my team doesn't appreciate rocks uh, very much. So if I can bring in Zapdos, threaten something like Empoleon or... Uh, the Mega Pinsir out and then just get off a of Defog, that will be fantastic. Uh, that's the intention. Uh, I do knock out Hoopa uh, with a U-turn after Rocks if he's not max, max HP. So there is that. Uh, and U-turn, like I said, is primarily there for the ground types. Now, I EV'd myself in a way to 2 KO the Gligar, but I'm not EV'd to knock out the P Mega Pinsir from full should I fail to get up Stealth Rock, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, so I gotta try to chip away at that thing somehow, and you guys are gonna see how in just a second, but... Uh, well, not just a second, in a few minutes, but moving on, we have uh, Joey, the uh, Steelix with the Rocky Helmet. Now, this is my Tapu Koko check. Uh, obviously, Tapu Koko is his Z-Mon. However, uh, being that Z Grassnaut only does about 50 to me, uh, if I carry Rest, then it's a lot harder for him to deal with me. Grassnaut also hits, uh, makes contact, so the Rocky Helmet's there for that, and his U-Turn as well, because he can't Volt Switch out on me. Earthquake hits very nicely across his team, except for the things off the ground, like his Mega Pinsir, once Mega Evolved, and his Gligar. Um, uh, Roar is there once I have Hazards up, and Stealth Rocks are there because, obviously, Pinsir, and especially Kyurem, they're both huge threats, and I want to be able to chip away at them. Basically, the idea of my team is to try to get up hazards and keep them there so Steelix being my uh, my Coco check had to come with rocks uh, this week so that's gonna be it for Steelix uh, very straightforward this is gonna be a rather quick team builder actually there's not too much to explain uh, next up we have my Lodic Asuna uh, competitive because I know that I'm gonna be forcing to fog if I get up my hazards so that's why I'm bringing this thing uh, we don't have Marvel scale but I wanted the physical defense so that I could take on Hoopa I have another Hoopa check which is coming up right after my Lodic as you guys are gonna see uh, but I did want something else to be able to take those physical hits as well from things like Girder as Mega Pinsir uh, and Cineroar especially those guys. Uh, Scald and Hidden Power Electric hit pretty uh, neutrally across his team, some super effectively, of course. Hidden Power Electric is there for the Empoleon as well as the Slowbro. Uh, I have Haze to make sure that Slowbro can't set up Calm Mines on me. Uh, it also deals with uh, other bulky setup mons. 
uh, that he can run, things like uh, bulk up uh, girder and whatnot, and then recover, of course, for uh, just immediate recovery. The uh, special attack investment is uh, actually so that I can 2 it KO max HP, no special defense investment, um, and Polion from full with uh, with a plus two hidden power electric, so that's what that's there for. Uh, obviously, if he runs some spadef, then I'm going to run into a little bit of an issue, but uh, but I should I should still be able to damage the Empoleon. Seeing that it doesn't have any form of recovery, I'll be fine. Also, this does the most damage, well, not the most, but a lot of damage to the, uh, the Slowbro once I'm at plus two. So Hidden Power Electric was the way to go. I could have run uh, Hidden Power Fighting, considering that I have Haze for the Slowbro. That way I would have been able to hit the, uh, the Kirim, should it come. Uh, but I felt like Hidden Power Electric uh, hit better across, and the fact that he has Electric Terrain also would help it help it out. So that's why I decided to run that. Next up, we have uh, the Hoopa check that I mentioned. We have a Kevia Berry Sylveon. Now I, I heavily debated between Leftovers and Kevia Berry on this thing. Um, Kevia Berry is specifically for Gunk Shot from Hoopa. If I'm able to keep up Rocks or a Toxic Spike, as you guys are going to see in a bit, uh, then Hoopa will go down after sub plus Toxic Spike or Rocks uh, to a Hyper Voice, even if it's max HP, because uh, I hit through the sub. And then I have Heal Bell on there for the rest of the team, because I know he's going to probably run a lot of Toxic, specifically for Milotic and things like Zapdos, uh, and even Megalopony, and uh, have Wish Protect, because I want to be able to heal up the team, uh, specifically members like my Scarf Zapdos should get chipped away at, and uh, especially my Steelix. Uh, being able to pass into Steelix once Coco comes in is really, really good. Now the issue here is that his Empoleon is a very, very big problem uh, to this Pokemon. Uh, not only does it get super effective coverage should it choose to run it, uh, I also have nothing to hit it, so I'm forced out almost every single time. So that's going to be a little bit of an issue. Uh, the defense investment on there and the Spidef as well is to be able to take on Specs Kirim plus uh, Hoopa with uh, Hyperspace Fury into Gunk Shot. So that's, uh, that's the spread I decided to go with. Next up, as I mentioned, we do have Toxic Spikes on the team. Coming from Scallopede, Focus Sash variant, uh, Speed Boost. So this is ideally my lead. Uh, I have Max Attack Adamant on there to be able to hit his Empoleon, uh, as well as his Mega Pinsir as hard as humanly possible with Rock Slide and Earthquake. Endeavor is on there so that if I get low, obviously, if I get brought down to my Sash, I can bring something down with me. And T-Spikes are really, really good against him. If you look at his team, uh, his main forms of offense being the Kiram, the Coco, Hoopa, and the pincer before Mega Evolution are all grounded, uh, as well as things that don't like getting poisoned, for example, Slowbro and Hippowdon. Uh, all of those things are affected and get chipped really, really quickly and really well. So I feel like Toxic Spikes are really strong against Envy. Uh, and I've also invested in my HP and my Spideth so that I can take two unboosted or non-invested, excuse me, Scalds from Empoleon, including a burn, and still get down to about 2 to 3%. Um, if he burns me after the first Scald, uh, I can get down to like 1 or 2%. If he burns me after the second Scald, I get down to about 11. So the idea is going to be able, is going to be to whittle uh, Empoleon down as much as possible as to open the door to things like Sylveon, which has a hard time hitting it and whatnot. So my priority should be T-Spikes. That's, that's, that's what's in my head going into this game is I want to get up T-Spikes and I want to keep them there because the rest of his team is likely to be grounded because if he brings Empoleon, it's more than likely going to have Defog, which means he has no reason to bring Gligar against me, especially the Gligar doesn't have the best matchup considering I have things like Shell Smash Barbarical, uh, Milotic that takes advantage of it with things like Ice Beam and whatnot. So uh, plus, I can run Aqua Tail uh, with a Z-move on my Scallopede to really hurt his team. As you can see, he doesn't take Aqua Tail too well outside of Empoleon, and that doesn't take Earthquake. So, my idea going into this is get up T-Spikes, keep him there, and then just force him to switch a lot. So, going into the game, that's what I had in mind. Now, we're going to move over to the game, and you guys are going to see what the matchup looks like. Uh, I'm going to start the video, and uh, here it is. We have uh, Aster versus Envy. This is our game. Um, as you can see, that's my team on the left. Envy decided to bring the Kirim, the Slowbro, the Slowbro, the Pinsir, and the, um, the Coco. I was almost guaranteed were coming. Uh, Slowbro is a great check to my Megalopony, uh, as my only way to, uh, to wear it down is gonna be through Toxic. You guys saw the Lopony before, I didn't go more into detail on it. I can go back, uh, but you guys see it here. It's got, uh, Toxic. Drain Punch, Return, and Fake Out. It's a pretty basic set. Uh, Toxic is there for the Slowbro, so, uh, moving back over to the battle. 
he brings the slow bro as expected so i have toxic on there for that in case my t-spikes don't go up i need a way to chip it away uh and then he has girder and empoleon empoleon i was almost guaranteed was coming girder was a little bit surprising but it makes sense it's a decent check to my uh my scolipede as it takes one of the stabs really well uh the one that the majority of his team doesn't want to take being megahorn so uh that was not too surprising now looking at this matchup i'm thinking okay i'm either gonna lead with scolipede or with zapdos i ultimately decide to lead with zapdos dose because I feel like I can just get off of Volt Switch. He didn't bring either of his ground types. I can get on out of there and get into something else. So I'm going to lead off with Inko. The Zapdos as he chooses to lead off with his Kyurem, which is very smart. Nicknamed Kyurem. Very nice. Uh, as I don't want to reveal my scarf too early. So I'm actually going to hard switch out of this, uh, out of this situation. And I'm going to go into my Sylveon as you guys are going to see. And I'm actually going to speed up this battle because it's, uh, it's going to be really slow otherwise. Uh, but we're going to start uh, increasing the speed. Uh, as you, can, you guys can see, he goes for a, ta a Toxic on this turn. And that's actually really, really annoying for me. Uh, because now I'm forced to Heal Bell or uh, just Wish or something. But I'm actually going to pull out a double here. Knowing that his Empoleon is more than likely to come in, I want to get the matchup that I talked about, which was Scolipede and Empoleon. Now, here's my first misplay of the game. Horrible play right here. I end up going for Earthquake as opposed to T-Spikes. I know that if I go for T-Spikes, I force back in his Empoleon later to go for a Defog because he doesn't want the rest of his team to get toxic. As a result, I can bring in my Milotic, get a competitive boost, and start firing off Scalds or Hidden Power Electrics and really damaging his team. He doesn't switch into Scald too well as you guys saw in the matchup. So I'm going to get up my T-Spikes now as his Girder came, on, uh, came in on my Earthquake. He's going to go for a Fire Punch and he's going to bring me down to 57. You guys don't see too well with the logo, but bear with me. Like I said, this is going to be the only post uh game. And I made this graphic really quickly uh, just to give you guys something to look at other than the battle. So I'm going to bring in my, uh, my Sylveon here on his next Fire Punch knowing that I can take anything but a Poison Jab. He didn't bring his Hoop so even if he does go for poison jab, I do have the Kebia Berry. Now here's where things start going pretty badly. He's gonna go into his uh, Empoleon, and I realize at this point that I have to switch out on to, on this thing every single time. Now my misplay here is staying in with my Sylveon, knowing that Sylveon isn't too important uh, other than taking hits from the Kiram, which we already saw had Toxic, so it's probably not Specs. Uh, then I, I probably shouldn't stay in here and I should have gone into my Milotic to get the boost from his Defog But instead I'm gonna go for Heal Bell to get rid of this Toxic and get back up to full uh, And his Empoleon is just sitting here in front of me now Almost everything on my team is at full at this point uh, And I'm gonna bring in my Zapdos because I know he's more than likely gonna go for Rocks As that is exactly what he's gonna do And uh, I'm not sure if I either click Defog or Volt Switch here uh, I'm gonna have to wait for the next turn as you guys are gonna see he's gonna switch out his Empoleon because he needs it for my Sylveon and he's gonna He's going to go into his Kyurem, and uh, I'm going to go for the Defog, I believe. No, I'm going to go for the Volt Switch. Okay, so I'm going to start shipping at this Kyurem, because it's the only thing keeping me from Volt Switching uh, and actually dealing damage to his team. Now, I'm going to go into Reem. This is my Megalopony. A uh, little bit of a ballsy play here. I have to start making a prediction, because I'm already on the back foot because of the fact that he got rid of my T-Spikes and that he uh, he got up his own Rocks. So he's going to go into Slowbro. I'm going to click Toxic on this turn to be able to... To start wearing this thing down however it does force me out after this turn so that's going to be a little bit of an issue uh, as i do not switch into slow bro well outside of things like my lotic uh, and sylveon so as a result my sylveon has to come back in because i only want to bring in my my lotic when he goes for a defog and being that sylveon is uh is continuously coming back in this is going to allow his empoleon in more times than i would like uh, I'm going to increase the speed once again because I, I know how long this game is and you guys are going to see it once we uh, actually get to the end. You can see the uh, the length of the video too uh, and pretty much estimate. But anyway, he's going to switch out his slow bro, go back into his Empoleon. And as, as I said, this is going to happen a lot this game. It's going to be this matchup right here. It's going to be Sylveon versus Empoleon. It's on the thumbnail as well if you guys didn't notice. Uh, but he's going to go for a Scald on this turn. Uh, as I'm just going to go for a, uh, a heal bell, get rid of this poison once again. Two of his mons now have shown toxic being his Kyurem uh, and his Slowbro, which is really annoying for me uh, because I have to keep going for heal bell to keep this Sylveon alive. And the entire time I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to need this Sylveon because it's my best pivot to his uh, to his Kyurem, to his Slowbro, uh, basically the things that don't want to deal with Megalopony. However, I did have another option in the back which was um, Milotic, but being that both Slowbro and his Kyurem have 
Uh, Toxic, my Lotic's not as good because it doesn't have rest or anything. I have to rely on Sylveon's heal bells. So I'm going to go into Zapdos here on his roar. He roars me out and he gets me into uh, to Zapdos, which is nice. Uh, I believe he went for Roar there, I'm not 100% sure. I know he has Roar, uh, but he's going to go into his Coco, uh, as I'm going to go for a Defog. So this is uh, this is nice for me, I'm going to get off uh, the Rocks. So now I don't have to deal with the Rocks. Uh, I have my Wish online, so I get back my uh, Zapdos back to full. And now I'm going to go into my Steelix, as uh, I believe Envy goes for uh, Nature's Madness. So he's going to bring me down to half. I expected this to come, but I actually expected it with Z Grass Knot, so... Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stay in in case he has Z Grass Knot. He would knock me out probably uh, if he was modest, but uh, I, this thing is literally only here for Coco. So uh, I'm going to go for the Earthquake on this turn because I know that if he goes for Z Grass Knot and doesn't knock me out, then I would knock out his Coco. What I should have done here was actually go gone for Stealth Rocks. Yes, I got off a little bit of damage on his Slowbro, but Rocks would have been amazing right there because once again it would have forced his Empoleon to defog before getting up its own Rocks, and that would have allowed in my... Uh, my Milotic. Here he gets a crit with his Slowbro on my Sylveon. Not too big of a deal. Uh, as now I have to fire off another Wish because I'm about at half. And who comes back in? You guessed it. Impressive. The Empoleon. So uh, this thing is really annoying. <laughs> it's uh, It just keeps coming back again and again and again. And I know he's going to get up rocks here. Uh, and I can't switch out my Sylveon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fire off a Hyper Voice at this point. Try to chip away. Uh, I've been doing this gradually throughout the game. But I need my Sylveon at full because of the fact that he has Toxic on two of his Mons. So I did bring Heal, Pel Heal Bell. I was prepared for Toxic. The problem is it's on the two Mons that uh, that Sylveon has to come in on. So that forces me to have to deal with Empoleon coming in every time after. So I'm just going to stay in here for a while, go for Wish, and repetitively just try to heal up my Sylveon. Essentially what I have to try to do is find an opportunity to get up my T-Spikes and keep them there, and that's going to be really hard. Uh, now what I'm going to start doing is, because my Sylveon's pretty healthy, I'm going to bring in my uh, my Zapdos on his Skull. It's going to get me to about half, and uh, I'm going to I'm gonna catch the Wish, and I'm going to go up to, uh, to near full right here. And obviously I'm threatening out his Empoleon because I am an Electric type. So uh, I think I'm going to Volt Switch here as he's going to uh, get in his Kirim. And now I'm going to start Volt Switching repeatedly, passing Wishes into, to, into my Zapdos and bringing it in every time on his Napoleon and try to continuously go for, uh, for Volt Switches on this Kirim. The problem is I, I'm still in this mindset that I absolutely need this Sylveon because if I don't keep it, I can't get the rest, the, the sleep off of my... Um, off of my Steelix, and as a result, I have to uh, to keep this thing healthy. I have to stay in here on his Empoleon and bring it back up to full with my Wish, and then I can go for a Wish and switch back in my Zapdos. The problem is, if I just let my Sylveon go down at some point, and I just kept bringing in my Zapdos, I would have continued to be at full with Zap, and I would have kept chipping away at his Kirim, which would have been really, really nice. Uh, and he would have eventually had it drop, so that would have been one of his Toxic users gone, and probably his best answer to my Milotic, considering that it does have Toxic. So right here, he's going to go for a Scald with his Empoleon. He's actually going to get a crit burn on me, uh, which is a little bit annoying, but uh, he fired off a lot of Scalds without getting burned, so I'm not too upset about it at all. Uh, and uh, now my Zapdos is in again against his Empoleon, so it's, it's about at 75%. I think it's at 139 uh, out of uh, whatever amount of HP, 189, I believe. So it's, it's still pretty healthy. And once again, I'm just going to keep going for Volt Switch, keep getting off this damage on his Kirim, keep bringing back in my Sylveon. And if I had leftovers on Sylveon instead of uh, Kebia Berry, this would have been a lot better because I wouldn't have been so minded to stay in with Sylveon every single time his Empoleon came in just to get back a little bit of health so I can keep this cycle up. But as a result, as you guys are going to see, uh, I keep staying in with Sylveon because I don't have leftovers, because I'm not getting passive recovery, and uh, this time I end up going for Protect because I don't want to fire off a Hyper Voice. Uh, as he's going to go for a Scald on the next turn, I'm going to go for a Wish, and uh, I think it's at this point that I just start firing off Hyper Voices trying to chip away at his Empoleon. Uh, I do it every once in a while, but now I think I get serious about it. Uh, as no, I'm going to go for a Heal Bell first because I want to get the burn off of my Zapdos because he crit burned me uh, earlier, and I'm going to get my Sylveon back up to full once again. Now, being obsessed with keeping this thing at full, was, like I said, is probably the worst thing uh, that I did this whole game. So he's going to burn me this time with his uh, Empoleon. And uh, once again, that mindset coming back into play. Uh, I'm going to go for a, for a Hyper Voice. And uh, he's going to go for a Roar on this turn, and I was really, really praying 
get me into Scallopede so I can get it in and get up a T-Spike. But instead he gets Lopany, and I'm like, all right, well, I have to make a play here once again. He's not going to stay in with his Empoleon because it's been the biggest nuisance to me, and I expect him to go into Slowbro, so I'm just going to fire off a return here. Maybe get a crit and uh, maybe wear him down quite a bit as he's uh, at about 95% right now. Return into poison. If I got a crit right there, uh, I might have been able to stay in and just go for another return and knock him out with a combination of return plus poison. But I don't get a crit, so I'm going to end up switching back into guess who? Sylveon. Knew he's back. Uh, and he goes for a psychic and uh, he's going to knock me down to uh, about, uh, I believe, 70 something HP. Uh, and now the thing is, I'm going to go for a wish here, and he's going to switch in his Coco, uh, knowing that I probably won't go for an attack on this turn. However, Hyper Voice wouldn't have knocked him out regardless, so this wasn't a bad play on his part at all. I'm going to go for a wish, and again, had I been conscious that Sylveon actually wasn't doing anything, I would have just switched out into Steelix here, and he goes for a Z-move, and I'm thinking, okay, it's Z-Grass, not I'm going to be fine, I'm going to live it as uh, it turns out to be uh, Electrium Z, uh, Gigavolt Havoc, and it's not even Thunderbolt, it's Wild Charge, so it's going to knock me out through my Protect. Now, we uh, we talked about our spreads a little bit after the game. He did get a decently high roll on the uh, on the Wild Charge, but honestly, it doesn't matter. I just played the Sylveon so horribly the whole game. Uh, so I'm going to go into my Steelix here. I know that he can't touch me at this point because he doesn't have Grass Knot, clearly. He's going to go into his Empoleon, and I go for Rocks. At this point, he doesn't care about Empoleon because Sylveon's gone, right? So I'm thinking, okay, well, he's probably going to Scald on this turn. He's going to uh, to try to knock out my Steelix because it's in the way of his uh, of his Coco. So I'm going to switch out, and I'm going to go into my Milotic, knowing that either he Scalds or he Defogs. Either one, I get advantage off of this. He goes for a Defog. Finally, I get my competitive boost with my Milotic, which I should have had, like, 40 turns ago, uh, and I'm going to go for uh, for Hidden Power Electric on the following turn, as I know he's probably going to prioritize getting up rocks because I still have my Zapdos alive. So I'm going to get off a pretty big hit on this thing because Electric Terrain is up. He does have some uh, some SPDF investment, seeing right here that this only does about 60%. Uh, now, I could have gone for a Hidden Power Electric on the following turn, but I felt like if he switches into his Kyurem, uh, I want to be able to hit it as hard as possible, maybe get a crit burn and knock it out. However, he didn't know if I was HP Electric or HP Fighting yet. I guess he could have calc it and found out uh, due to the terrain. Uh, but I end up going for Scald, and this keeps his Empoleon alive just a little bit longer, and he goes for Roar, gets rid of my competitive boost, and uh, he's going to get me into my Scallopede. And my Scallopede falls below 25% at this point. It's actually really low. You guys, I know you're, you're probably having a hard time seeing the actual HP amounts, uh, but it's like a 23 HP. Now, again, instead of going for T-Spikes and actually having a way to chip down the rest of his team, I'm going to go for Earthquake and knock out his Empoleon, and now guess who gets to come in? Kingpin himself, Mega Pinsir, and uh, we don't have the uh, mandatory Mega Evolving rule this season, so Envy's going to make the correct play of actually going for Quick Attack in regular and getting a Moxie boost. Now, I did discuss this uh, during the Team Builder portion, but uh, I'm going to go into Zapdos, and as you guys are going to see, he actually Mega Evolves. Um, I didn't expect him to Mega Evolve, I thought he would. He might stay in regular, but uh, he, he does go for the Mega Evolution, not knowing yet that I'm Scarfed, which is actually really nice, as I go for a Volt Switch, and it doesn't knock him out. So <laughs> now I have to sack something else off. I'm going to go into, uh, into my Steelix on what I think is going to be a Stone Edge. This does like 12 damage, it does absolutely nothing. Uh, and uh, I'm actually going to make a Try Hard play and switch out here, expecting an Earthquake, that he would run Earthquake for my team. Uh, but he actually goes for the return, and he's going to knock on my Zapdos. I'm praying for the static here, and no static. So, uh, unfortunately, this thing is still alive. I'm going to go into my Megalopony now, threaten the fake out. MV's going to be making a very nice play to conserve differential, and he's actually going to switch out into his Slowbro, knowing that it's a pretty safe switch in. Uh, obviously, I could have gone for return right there, but... Uh, knowing that he had a plus one quick attack online, there was no way I was taking that chance. I would much rather try to uh, knock out the pincer and get back some differential myself. So I'm going to switch out now into my Milotic. I'm really low on Mons, as you guys can see. Uh, he's going to go for a Psychic, and uh, he's actually going to get a Spadef drop, which is going to give me competitive. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe I still have a shot here, being that he just Spadef dropped me. Uh, but the problem is that his biggest problems to me, being this Slowbro, uh, as well as his Kirim, are both special attackers, and with a spadef drop, I'm not looking very good. Now, he's going to go into his Kirim, and I'm going to go for the Recover. I should have actually Scalded on that turn, because as you guys are going to see from the uh, the next Scald damage, uh, had I gotten a crit burn on this Kirim, it might have actually died on switch-in, and I would have still been decently healthy, enough to take on his Pinsir, I feel, 
uh, as well as, because I wouldn't have been poisoned, uh, as well as his girder and his slow bro. The problem is his, uh, his Coco was still alive, so it could still come in and, uh, and ruin my day with a wild charge. But I kept my Steelix for that exact reason. Now, uh, I'm just firing off Skulls at this point, trying to get a burn. Um, I'm not too complacent about the fact that I'm not getting a burn because Envy took like 12 Skulls before he actually got a burn. Uh, on me, so it's not that big a deal. I'm now going to switch it into uh, my Lopini, expecting him to recover, or Roost rather, as he's going to make a nice play and go for the Ice Beam on that turn, knowing that uh, my only play is probably to go into Lopini hard on uh, on his recovery, uh, and he's going to get off an Ice Beam, and now I no longer have the competitive boost, so he's just going to Roost stall me essentially, uh, and this game is over. This Karim is going to is going to finish me off. Uh, I didn't prep well for the Empoleon, considering I didn't have a hidden power on Sylveon to be able to weaken it. Uh, and the fact that I didn't play correctly to, correctly to force his Empoleon to defog earlier. Uh, I, the sequence of plays at the beginning of the game is, is really what got me. Um, like I said, I should have gone for T-Spikes as opposed to Earthquake on his Empoleon, knowing very well that I could take two Scalds uh, plus a burn because of my investment. I should have prioritized getting up T-Spikes. That would have forced in his Empoleon to go for a defog, and I would have brought in my Milotic way, way earlier in this game. Uh, and started threatening his Pokemon because nothing on his team really wanted to take uh, Hidden Power Electric. He didn't know that I hadn't had, had ha even had Hidden Power Electric yet. So I, I don't know if he would have switched in his Kyurem. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure that Hidden Power Fighting would have been a little bit better uh, because it would have done about 40 to 50 to this uh, to this Kyurem once I was at plus two. So that would have probably been the better option. But uh, Envy out prepped me. He outplayed me as well. Uh, as you guys can see by the score line, it's going to be a 5-0 in MV's favor here at the end, uh, unfortunately. But, I mean, uh, he, he played amazing. MV actually had the flu uh, when we played, and uh, he... Uh, really, kudos to him for being able to play through a flu and, and play so well. Uh, there's a reason he's done so well uh, both of the last seasons of the GBA. Uh, if you guys haven't checked him out yet, definitely go do so in the description as well as every other coach uh, in the GBA. They'll all be there, but uh, Envy wins. We lose 5-0, unfortunately. Uh, the game was a lot closer than that. It was just a, a couple of stupid misplays at the beginning of the game. Uh, I've been out of league format for about three months now. That's no excuse, but um, I'm a little bit rusty, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that as an excuse. Um, we ha do have another game, of course, next week coming up against uh, Chimpact. Uh, it will be live commed as well. I'm uh, setting up all my graphics already. I'm actually recording this about an hour and a half before it goes live, so uh, you guys uh, know that this is really, really close to the uh, to the upload. Uh, it's currently 12.30 p.m. Eastern, so hopefully I can get this out in time because we scheduled for 2 p.m. Eastern uh, for our upload. So, uh, yeah, guys, go and check out MV in the description. He played an amazing game. Uh, VLC, please go away. And uh, if you uh, if you like the video, make sure to uh, to click like. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. Go and check out all the coaches in the description, as I said before. And I will catch you guys later. Ciao.